life, truth, and the universe. When you mention the word life, various things will happen. We'll think of various things. A person who is all right in life, quite comfortable in life, will say, oh, life is good. The other person who is a bit striked materially will say, oh, life is a battle. But what I like to hear most is when we become a little bit philosophical and we say life is a journey. A journey in which all of us are travelers. So when we accept this premise, then a question again comes to mind. If we are travelers on this journey, then where have we come from and where are we going? This is an aspect which this program is designed to look into at the appropriate time. Truth. When we talk about truth, we are still taking one step up philosophically. And then we'll say, what is truth? We hear many times people say, find the truth and the truth will set you free. I'll tell you a little story. In this monastery or ashram, where the student of this master went up to the master and asked, put this question to the master. Master, what is truth? There was no answer from the master. The student again said, master, for the second time, what is truth? No answer. The student was becoming impatient. So he said, Master, for the third time, please, I am asking you this question. What is truth? The master turned around to the student and said, I have answered you twice. So a silence, truth. The master was silent in the two instances. A silent, silence, the truth that we are talking about which when you discover will set you free i think there is more to it than that is the universe we live in though is silent but active is it the truth that we are searching for which when we find will set us free that is another aspect that this program is designed to look into this truth which when we find will set us free will eventually be the magic code with which we can break away or break out of the materialistic prison in which we find ourselves. Truth is what we are looking for to set us free so that when we are set free out of this materialistic prison we can soar into the universe, not only physically, but mentally and spiritually as well. And then we begin to feel our oneness. We we'll begin to feel the joy of finding ourselves at one moment with the universe, the stars, the planets, the solar systems, the galaxies, which are uncountable. When we find ourselves enjoying free freedom, feeling ourselves one with the universe, then we would have found that jewel, that magic code, which will begin to set us free. In the history, in our history on this planet, we have many great beings, people who have come to this planet, who have lived on this planet, who have come to live here and then left the planet in a better state than they came to find it. These people we have described as great men. 
to the extent that we have even deified some of them. Now, this program wants to look at the work of one of such great men, the Atheist Society, the work of, and teachings of the Atheist Society, which has come into being as a result of the life of this one great man, the late Dr. George King. Now, to do that, fortunately, at this maiden launching of this program, I have with me Reverend Mervyn Smith, who was just visiting, just at the right time, visiting this country just at the right time. So we will ask Reverend Mervyn Smith, who is a priest in the Atheist churches and also a senior engineering officer of the Atheist Society Spiritual Commando Unit in London. The master, Dr. Josh King, will ask him to give us an insight into the early life of Dr. King right on up to the time when he actually had contact with uh, beings from other worlds and began to leave the world, began to work in such a way as to leave the world in a better state and who also left the world a legacy too immense vast, immense legacy which we will use, the Ontario Society uses in, um, uh, uh, in keeping the world in shape. Reverend Mervyn, welcome. It's a real pleasure to be here. And indeed, we're, we're looking today at uh, the Ontario Society and particularly uh, about its founder, its president, Dr. George King who was indeed a very remarkable individual. He was born in uh, 1919, just after the end of the First World War in England. Uh, and he had went through an early life which was absolutely exceptional. Things happened in the young George King's life, which seemed to be moulding him and moulding him for greater things that were to happen later on in his life. And he was born, as I say, in 1919. He was born as a very weak and sickly child uh, in a very poor Britain at that time. Uh, his family, his mother and father, moved uh, many, many times, and they moved uh, at one point, to a tiny little vi village in Devon. And the young George King, a boy, was just uh, a recovering from this early setback in his health. The country life suited him. And he was out wandering the lanes on his own, uh, not far from his home, just as a five-year-old. And he came across four big, burly uh, men trying to load this great bull into a back of a, a van. Truck, yeah. yeah. And they couldn't move. You know, the, 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 the bull was kind of standing there. It refused to be moved. And the men were getting angrier and angrier and angrier with, with, with it. And eventually, the four of them gave up uh, and sat down on a little wall and got out their tea and sandwiches and had a break from it. And the young George witnessed this, and this kind of epitomizes his vision and, uh, and practicality for the rest of his life. He saw exactly what was going. The bull didn't want to get in the van, and the, the guys were getting more and more worked up. The young George walked up to the bull, whispered to it, took it by its nose ring, and led it straight into the back of the van. A remarkable, absolute yeah, remarkable that marvelous, story. That is marvelous and, story. And it just shows you that from that early age, he could see what was needed, and through his practical uh, abilities, abilities yeah. absolutely. Always to help. Always he, ready he, to help. He, 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 he would, he would uh, 
do the right thing in, in the situation. And we can recount many, many kind of instances like this. There's, um, there's one wonderful instance. His, his mother and father, together with his younger sister, Molly, uh, always seemed to be moving home. And they'd moved back up to Yorkshire. And at that stage, his mother was seriously ill, very, very ill. Mm. And one evening, um, the young George, as I say, only 11 years old, decided to uh, leave the house and go up to a nearby hill and pray for his mother. Now, he, he, did, he didn't really understand what he was doing. And he went to the top of this little hill, not, not very high, and he flung his hands out like this, not in the conventional way of praying that children are always taught hands together like that, but it seemed to know somewhere within him to throw his hands out like that and ask for power to come through him to be directed to his mother. And a being manifested in front of him after this happened and said, go back home, your mother is now well. And he went back home, went back down the hill, and he got back to the house, and he found that uh, his mother was up and about, uh, out of a bed in the kitchen, kitchen that's right. making that's herself that's some yeah. food, because mm -hmm. she hadn't eaten for a considerable period yes, of time. Yes, yes. And these are many of the stories. Another story that comes to mind was George King was a very bright individual at school. He was good at games. He was he, except, almost every yeah. Exam, yeah. Uh, he, he was good at most subjects. He was often top of his class in the majority of subjects. There was only two subjects that uh, he wasn't any good at. Uh, one was Latin. He couldn't get on with Latin at all. And the other was history. Yeah. He thought the history that had been written and given to, to mankind was so strange it couldn't be true. So he, he didn't kind of get too involved with yeah. history. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it seemed inevitable that George King, uh, the schoolboy, would uh, matriculate. That was the examination. Yeah. And he would get sponsored to go on to university yeah, yeah. in, like in later life. Like A-levels in Ghana. Yeah, yeah. Ab yeah. Ab ab absolutely. Mm. Yeah. However, the, the great plan had another idea for George King. He was in a science class and the science, te science teacher was yeah. doing a lesson on levers and pulleys and he was handing rounds a metal bar to the children. It, apparently it was about 18 inches long and about an inch and a half thick. Yeah. And he, he passed it from student to student. And the science master was challenging each student, kind of, you know, bend, bend, bend the bar, it, yeah. bend the bar. Mm. And it came to George King. And you know, the, the master said, bend the bar. And George King bent it. Just like that. Just like that. Yeah, this was a piece of stick. Or, ab ab or absolutely, cane. like like, yeah. a, like a piece of bamboo cane or, or cane. Or, like that, yeah, yeah. Mm. absolutely remarkable. Mm. And silence fell, and uh, the the science master didn't know what to do. So he took him off to um, the headmaster's office, and the headmaster, who liked the young George, said, "Well." this is going to be a very difficult situation. Uh, and he suspended him from school. And mm -hmm. the parents is, of other children yeah. didn't want him to... to yeah. uh, around uh, around uh, yeah. their, their, their children. The PTA went amok. You it, know, they can't have... It, exactly. Someone who can have this man. sort of strength. Yeah. What, what is going to do a, to our, 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 our children? children. And um, so... Uh, he was suspended from school. Consequently, he didn't matriculate, mm. he didn't go on to university, which at the time kind of saddened him because that was the way yeah, he sort he, of he saw his money. life un yeah. unfolding. And I suppose you could say those who have studied yoga, the uh, 
the science of union with God, because that's what yeah, yoga, yoga means. means yes. um, know that there is a great force within us, mm. and this actually rise up through our su spine. And even then, young George King was demonstrating that he was had this Ability, little bit of mastery yeah. within yeah. him, and he obviously had a partial he, rise of this great energy power. within him, enabling him to... We gave to, him the ability to bend this yeah, so easily. Ab ab absolutely. Mm, yeah. um, and from there, the family moved to Blackpool, and there are, there are <coughs> many, many yeah. adventures. I we remember, could, we, if I, did, yes, I, I remember do. when, uh, during this uh, bending of this, and you know, yeah. Uh, the the bullies, you know, the big boys in the school, the bullies, you know, wanted to, you know, to take him on, wanted to challenge him because of, you know, this uh, well, extra demonstration. Well, it, energy. it wasn't only the yeah. bullies in the yeah. school. Yeah. Th this spread like wildfire. I yeah. mean, this was hot village gossip, yeah. gossip, and it spread around the neighbouring villages mm. and towns. Mm. And you got the local bully boys, yeah. you know, who were far older yeah. than him. Uh, Here we call in. them the macho boys. Yeah, yeah, the big macho <laughs> yeah, they lads. They were yeah, matching yeah. with their strength. Yes. Yeah, that's it. And yeah. they came yeah. in and started challenging. And, and it got so bad that the family Decided, had to up yeah. sticks, uproot themselves, and move to the other yeah. side and of the country. I mean, yeah. it was very, yeah. very, very difficult. And uh, these are just some, some of, of the, the early life early things that happened to this mm. very, very remarkable man. And he seemed all the time to be driven onwards by um, his, his, his innermost yearnings for knowledge, for truth, for understanding spirituality. And he grew up and the Second World War came along. Um, and he registered as a uh, firefight fighter. He became a became a, a section leader in the, the London fire, service, yeah. fire brigade. Yes. Mm. And he 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 rose within in in the fire service, and he he performed many many heroic deeds during the uh, bombing during this mm, terrible yeah. time mm. of the Blitz. And by this time, it was, it was just, just out of his teens, um, he could demonstrate virtually all psychic abilities.